All right, here we go. Jules Yusuf. Yes. Okay. Johara. Johara. Yeah. So um, I have the questions, luckily, from last time. So I'm going to use some of them. Um, one of them says, where, uh, where did you attend school and what is your degree? Do you guys remember this question at all from last time? I'm going to make it more engaging, by the way. I hope it's OK. Do you guys remember that? So can I repeat the answer? Or is repeat it, it. Repeat it? Yeah, OK. I think we forgot. Short OK, so I started out of high school. I went to CSUN. And at CSUN, I, um, I got into painting, because that was my, my favorite thing to do. And um, a professor there um, took me aside one day in painting. And she said, you know, you would really benefit from a more intensive um, curriculum, such as a BFA. So look into transferring, such as UCLA, you know, USC. But unfortunately, CSUN doesn't offer a BFA. So with her letter of recommendation, I applied. And I went to, I went to USC. Um, I got into painting there, but I would always pass by the, um, the, you know, the computer classrooms downstairs, obviously graphic design, right? And I'd peek in and I'm like, that's so interesting. How are they like creating things with a mouse? And like, like we use the brush, like this is interesting. So then I started to dabble in graphic design and quickly fell in love with it. Uh, my first project ever was design a book, a cover, and the interior, and I didn't know the programs. So I ran over here to COC at night to take Photoshop and Illustrator, all these applications, in order to submit my, my project at USC. So it was super challenging, but I had so much fun, and it put me on this path of you know now doing branding and graphic design for businesses. And of course, I could always paint and draw, right? Because no one's going to stop me from doing that. So it um, turned out to be for the best. Um, so that was a little bit about my journey to graphic design. Um, what are some trends that are changing and why? Some trends that are changing or have already changed for sure are the, um, the drop shadow. Do you guys remember a while ago, like everything needed to have this like kind of drop shadow and lettering? Right now, that's completely out. That looks really outdated. And what is in is, um, have you guys seen that glitch effect? There's a glitch effect where things kind of look like almost out of focus, like, you know, like that turquoise and the red and the black, like that glitch. Um, and then neon. Playing around with neon, that's really uh, trending right now. So yeah, those are just some, uh, some trends. Um, what do you do for self-care self to stay energized and fresh? So I actually learned this from um, a master painter, so I was taking his studio course. This is a, um, a private course, and you know, I was kind of like not drawing right, and then he comes over to me and he just taps on my shoulder and he goes, when was the last time you went to the beach? And I was like, the beach? Why do I need to go to the beach? <laughs> and he goes, well, you know, um, he goes, Julianne, like looking at a body of water is very therapeutic. And he goes, a lot of times you have to have that calm in order to let out that, like, that stroke is going to come out smoothly versus, say, like, you're doing it three times where it's a little bit more rigid, you know? So um, self-care pays a lot in the pre my profession especially, whether I'm doing art or graphics, um, because it's an intuitive thing. And of course, where I'm creating from is, um, you know, it takes, it takes consideration. And sometimes there isn't like a one plus one equals an answer. Um, it's, it's sometimes it's frustrating. So actually, I'll use Gloria's uh, logo as a great example. So in creating Gro Gloria's logo, we worked on it, and it was great, but there was something missing. And I didn't know what it was. And I actually had to wait quite a while. Do you remember what it was? The tiny change, but it changed everything. Um, if you don't remember. Was it, was it the R? Yes. Yes. So we had the woman within the circle, right? And then we had the writing around the circle, right? Her, her logo is kind of like a, a sticker kind of emblem, like it's a circular um, size. And the arm of the woman, right when I broke out of the structure of the circle, it made it more dynamic. And something like that, it's like I was looking at it, and I was like, oh, got to walk away. I don't know what's wrong with it. And then finally, it comes to you. So. That's why I love this profession, but at the same time, it's something I am passionate about because it constantly challenges me to be better. 
and figure out ways to improve and come up with that creative problem solving a little bit quicker. And um, it really helps being that I'm an entrepreneur now because I remember working in the corporate office where, you know, um, that banner is going up on our website, you know, Monday morning at 7 a.m. So it's due Friday, whatever, like it has to be submitted. And being that I had an amazing boss, um, he used to work for Disney, he's back at Disney now, um, who trained me and kind of molded me, right, and all of this. So he was like, I get it. I, he's like, I, ma I managed creatives, and it's very different from managing other professions. But he's like, I'll give you things a little bit earlier so you have that time. So that way, it's not like, OK, well, it's finished, so submit it, whether it's good or bad. Because that's something I'm not able to do, especially like b owning my own business. I will not put out work that I don't 100% believe in. If it means waiting a little longer, I'll go ahead and do that. But to me, um, it's much better to come up with a quality logo that may have taken maybe another extra week and then looks great versus something just doesn't feel right. Because then I just wouldn't, I wouldn't deliver it in that case. And if I worked for someone else, I could see how they're like, deadline, this is the cutoff, give us what you have. So um, that's just a little detour there about... Um, Imagination. Yeah. What's your passion in life? It's a really big question. Um, I think my passion in life is using art as a catalyst to help, empower, heal, um, connect people. Um, I think you guys heard me speak about how I want to go to an orphanage in um, Uganda because it's all gray walls and knowing the um, power of color and how it could impact students to improve their creativity, their focus, their just to be excited to go to school is, is huge, right? So paint is very cheap considering the payoff of what it can potentially do for these kids. Um, uh, so yeah, that's my passion. I love animals, I love art. Just love helping people. I think, yeah, if anyone comes up to me and asks me a question, I'm always happy to be an open book. Um, that's just something that differentiates me. I know some people are like, oh, you know, you need to charge for consulting and all that, but I believe in charging for my actual work and then consulting, because even if you tell someone something, they might not know how to do it. It's like, what inspires you? Well, when I get a creative block, I'll go to Barnes & Noble, or I'll actually go to the liquor like section in a supermarket and I look at all the bottles because those companies have the most money to pay for graphics. So you know all those labels on wine bottles are gorgeous, stunning, and you know they spent millions, right? So when I want to get you know inspired, I'll go over there. But I can tell that to someone. Okay, that that's what inspires me. Go ahead, go go create your logo, you know, and they'll come up with something completely different. So um, I definitely believe more in the um, abundance mindset versus like scarcity. I like to speak words of love versus fear and that's something um, I'm shifting in my, my just my dialogue. Um, and it really helps with creating as well because you gotta stay, you gotta stay open and kinda um, Accept inspiration wherever it comes because you never really know where you might find inspiration, right? Two minutes. Minute Do you guys, does anybody have a question? That, sure. So, um, earlier you were talking about just, you know, different things that are trending. And yeah. I was wondering, are you able to kind of, I mean, not that you have a crystal ball and you can't obviously look into the future, but you can kind of start to see where things are starting to shift and see what maybe the next big thing might be in your industry, color-wise or, or gift-wise, whatever it is. You're talking about like a forecast? Yeah, like can you personally, Project. Jules, yeah, can you kind of see, oh man, it looks like this is the kind of the wave of the future, things that you might notice, being that you're always on the end looking at different ads and colors, palettes and fonts and all that. Yeah, so, um, I think, I think history repeats itself, kind of like fashion, right? And so like a while back, ombre was not cool at all. You know, the colors like that are bleeding, like the sunset. 
And now that's come back. I've seen so many book covers with that. So many conferences are going with that like campaign design. The, the ombre, you know, I don't know if you've seen it. Like the three different like colors. Um, unicorn stuff, like super colorful. So yeah, that's, that's really what's in right now. And again, I could look into like fashion forecasts, Rob, and be able to kind of get an idea. But like I said, usually like things will kind of repeat, repeat themselves. Yeah, um, yeah. cool. right. Yes. Unicorn, rainbow, see? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Woo!